Hello and welcome to another episode of the Portrait Prophet Show. I am so glad you're here today with me. My name is Jim Landers and my mission is simple. I help portrait photographers like you make a great income doing what they love. Each week on the Portrait Pro Profit Show, you get tips and systems on the business side of photography designed to help you become a master of marketing and sales, reducing the struggles that most photographers face so you can finally get what you deserve. You are in the right place. Welcome to the Portrait Profit Show. The Portrait Profit Show is brought to you by Digital Pro Lab and Landers Photography School. For more information on Digital Pro Lab, go to digitalprolab.com. That's digitalprolab.com. And for Landers Photography School, landersphotoschool.com. Mm. I am so glad you guys are here with me today. We have a great group of panelists to help you. By the way, before we get into that, I want to encourage you to leave uh, to to register on uh, uh, StreamYard uh, by well we use a, a product or a platform called StreamYard which causes us to be able to multi to stream this to multiple different places at the same time we we stream we stream it to five different Facebook pages two different YouTube channels and one LinkedIn page and for those of you who are on the Facebook pages I'll be able to see you if you register by what's going across the screen right now going to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. When you do that, you allow me to see your name. Otherwise, it just says Facebook user. And if you want to remain anonymous, then don't click that link. But I want to encourage you guys tonight and always to leave comments, to ask questions, and of course, to hit that love button and that like button all the way through the entire show. So do that for me right now. Hit that. Uh, by the way, if you're watching on Facebook, you see down at the bottom of the post, it's the last part of it. It have that have that link. You just click on it. You don't need to type it in like I'm showing you here on the bottom of the screen. You just click on that link and it will allow you uh, to be seen by me. That when you, that way, when you leave a comment or you leave a uh, a question, I'll be able to know it's you. So do that for me real quick. And I want all of you real quick to do me a favor and enter in hashtag live. Go over to the comments right now and enter in hashtag live. That tells me that you're here watching right now. If you're watching the replay, please enter in hashtag replay. Now, I can see that some of you have already ent entered in the hashtag live. I see a whole bunch of Facebook users and that's great if you guys want to be uh, want to remain anonymous, but I can see uh, I can see uh, Jonathan, I can see Rick, I can see Stacia. How are you guys doing? Let's see. I've got Dave here, uh, Jeff Truitt. How are you doing, Jeff? Uh, uh, Tiffany, glad you're here. Robin, yay, Robin. Uh, let's see. Lupe is here. Hi, Lupe. Uh, man, a bunch of you. Tony's here. Juan is here. Uh, by the way, there's a lot more names here. If I haven't called your name, I'm sorry. I do appreciate that you're that you're here, but I could spend the entire time going through all the names. So I'm just throwing out a few that that are that are here and real obvious. But thank you guys for being here. Hey, Jade, glad you're here. Um, so I, I keep on entering in that hashtag live. That tells me that you're here watching live right now. Uh, so. I'm about to bring on our panelists, just so you can say hi real quick, and then I'll allow each one of them to uh, share a little bit about who they are. Now, just again, throughout this show, I encourage you, enter in comments, ask questions. Some of those will be able to answer live on the show. Not all of them, because there's a lot of stuff already planned. We've got a lot of good stuff for you. Um, but if we can, we definitely are going to include those those com those comments and those questions where we can. And so I definitely want you guys to do that. Now, before I, I bring them on, if there's anything that you would like to discuss one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one about what we talk about tonight or anything related to business, uh, you'll see now on the screen, I do a free private consultation to anyone who asks on the business side of photography, just by going to that link that you see on the screen. That's calendly.com forward slash photo school forward slash 30 minutes. Now you might want to do a screenshot real quick to save that. Um, but uh, but that's that's something that I offer to to all photographers. Uh, most of them use it for, you know, asking questions about marketing or they're priceless. Priceless is a big one. Uh, and it's definitely something I can help out during that time. Now, if it's something that takes longer, well, then, well, maybe we'll talk about doing a, a class or a private session of some sort. But this, uh, what you see on the screen is is totally free. All right. Help me by clicking the share button. 
just right there on the on on the post you see the share button click that share button um and let other people know that this show exists we're about to start so let other people know that this is happening right now and if you know someone in particular hit that comments hit the comments and they click on at and then their name that way they get an individual invitation to the show do that right now so they can uh, get something out of this show that you are about to get out of this show all right thank you guys for doing for sharing the portrait profit show now Today, we're talking about how I get my clients and our panelists. I'm going to bring them on one at a time are Adrian Rawlings, Amato Rivas, and Aaron Resob. How are you guys doing? Good. good. Doing good. Thanks for having us. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Glad you guys are here. Uh, and we had a chance to, to talk uh, ahead of time before the show. Um, but uh, I want to uh, publicly thank each one of them for being here. They, they've got a million things going on in their life, just like you guys. And I want to thank you guys who are watching for being here. You guys have a million things going on in your life, but you want to to increase your business those the uh, the panelists here um of course want to do that but they're also willing to help and and give advice and and share their experiences so that uh, so you can gain from that so thank you guys all for being here today and helping out the photographer community by sharing your experiences absolutely yeah definitely definitely I'm going to take them off uh, one at a time. I'm going to leave Adrian on because she's the first one who gets to, to share um, about herself. So let me take off Aaron and Amato. All right. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. A little nervous. First yeah. time. <laughs> well, um, the fact that you're here makes me happy and it may, it shows, you know, definitely that you in, enjoy helping out other people. So yeah. thank you for being here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about uh, who you are and what you do? Yeah. Um, I'm Adrian. I started my photography journey, I guess, in um, high school when it was like back with like film in the dark room. And um, that's really where I found my love of photography. And um, I was a teacher for a few years. And when I quit, I was able to just kind of throw myself into my photography business and make it what I wanted. I kind of shot everything under the sun for a while um, and then really found my love um, with family portraits. So I do maternity, newborn, family, and kind of everything in between um, and slowly built my business up. Um, I made every mistake that new photographers make along the way and wish that I had something like this to help me when I first started. Um, it would have made it a lot easier to get to where I am now. But um, I would say that this has probably been um, a full time thing for like six or seven years now. Six or seven years. Very cool. And you were a teacher before I was. What did you teach? Kindergarten. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Kinder. So yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a real short story. I substitute taught for one school year. It was a number That's of that. years ago, so I'm not going to say that. what year yeah. it was. But I had two kindergarten classes during that one year, and they were fantastic. But those guys have so much freaking energy that I went home with a headache both days. Yes, it's exhausting. After working with those yes. guys. <laughs> so now this is, I can, you know, edit in my pajamas most days. And that's really nice. <laughs> so this is more your style? Or... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much, Adrian. I appreciate you, you being here. All right. So let's bring on Amato next. So Amato, how are hey, you doing? Adrian. Good. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. Happy it's, to be here. It's been a while since you and I have talked. It has been. So it has, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's, it's um, wonderful to, to see you here and, and uh, doing what you do. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and, and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Amada Rivas. I uh, own and operate Amada Rivas Photography. Um, I'm a high school senior portrait uh, photographer. Um, I served 22 years in the Navy. Um, I started my business in 2009 while I was still active duty. Um, running it on a part-time basis. Um, like Adrian said, I 
shot everything under the sun when I first started. Um, even shot a few weddings and quickly realized that I was not having any of that. Um, so I got out of that that part of it real quick, but um, stuck with the families and um, mainly families and high school seniors for a bit and realized that high school seniors is really where uh, I wanted to stick or uh, focus on. They're just a whole lot of fun. Um, so in about 2015, I decided that's all I'm going to photograph is high school seniors. And that's what I did up until I retired from the Navy in the summer of 21. Um, and that's when I moved out here to San Antonio. I'm originally from California. Um, so yeah, I'm one of those California transplants. Don't hold it against me. But uh, I got here in the summer of 2021. And uh, I've been running my, my business part time, uh, mostly because I absolutely love what I do as a day job. I'm, uh, I'm an aerospace physiologist um, down on the south side. And I absolutely love that job. But at the same time, I uh, really, really appreciate and, and enjoy photography. And hopefully, uh, here in the next couple of years or so, I'll be able to cut back on that uh, physiology job and start focusing full time on my uh, on my photography. But yeah, that's me. Thank you, Amato. Yep. Um, that sounds like an interesting job that you have for your your yeah it's job. it's it sounds a lot more complicated than it really is <laughs> <laughs> um we just do a lot of research and development on air crew systems oh yeah just yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's no problem i got gotcha. you <laughs> I, I could do that in my sleep too <laughs> <laughs> uh, and i see you have a puppy in the background uh yeah that's my dog butch um he's napping so hopefully he doesn't nobody rings the doorbell <laughs> Because he'll start, <laughs> you know, going into little dog syndrome and run all over the house barking. Gotcha. I have well, to go he on looks mute real cute. Quick. The little bit that I can see of him. <laughs> yeah, it's a little corgi chihuahua mix down there. Oh, really? Yeah. That's an interesting mix. Very cool. Thank you, Amado. I'm so glad you're here with us today. All right. So let's bring on Aaron. Aaron, Ew. how's it going? How's it going? Oh, it's going good. I'm excited to be here, Jim. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. Hey, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So I'm Aaron Resop. I uh, was born in San Antonio, lived here my whole life and basically got into photography as a means of, you know, taking pictures of my kids and my wife and, you know, getting all those really cool shots and <clears throat> kind of got pulled into weddings and, you know, kind of, uh, with some friends asking me to capture their weddings for them and um, me being like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm new in this whole thing, uh, you know, just warning, like you should probably hire a professional, but they're like, no, we want you. And so jumped right into, uh, right into weddings and loved it since just love capturing photos because it's just that timeless piece that whenever people, you know, pass on, whenever they move on to different stages in their life, they're able to kind of look back at those uh, moments and be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, be able to just relive everything that they uh, they were experiencing. Uh, I'm married. I have uh, three kiddos. Uh, you know, my my son Joseph. He is uh, seven years old. Daughter Savannah is five, and then we have my little boy Jack, who's two. So um, it's a uh, it's pretty cool experience being a dad. I just love it and um, love working with uh you know doing doing what I love, which is photography and got to work with this great company called Stride Studios and uh, been doing the uh, directing of sales and operations over there, along with all the uh, primary photography as well. So a little bit about me. Sounds like a lot of stuff, Aaron. A lot of stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hear the kiddos in the background screaming, uh -huh. you know, that's, that's what they are. They might have how, little kid syndrome. <laughs> how old are they? So my, my oldest, he is, uh, he's seven years old. My daughter is five. And then my youngest boy, Jack, he is two years old. Seven, five, two. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Our last one was a COVID baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, All in single digits. Yep. Cool. I bet you guys, you guys have the cutest family portrait. <laughs> oh, we do. Yeah. It's hard to get them all to, uh, to look in one direction though. We have to have, uh, you know, have to have like Mickey Mouse sitting on top of the camera. <laughs> well, well, maybe you can have Butch get everybody's attention all at one time. I'm sure. I'm there we go. With that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, Aaron, I've got the uh, first question uh, for you. Uh, and so let me bring that up on the on the screen and ask that question of you. For so sure. are, are you doing any online advertising for, you know, to get additional business for yourself, such as Google ads, Facebook ads, that kind of stuff uh, in order to get business or reach prospects or whatever it is you're trying to do, increase mm -hmm. an email list. Are you doing any of that? Mm -hmm. So we, we do uh, that, that form of marketing, but very, very minimally, like what we tend to find, especially for like wedding clients in particular is getting rate right in front of them. So like with referrals, with wedding shows where they actually get to see you right, you know, face to face, we found it really effective to be doing wedding shows as a primary means of marketing. It also seems like when it comes down to, you know, Facebook advertisement, it used to be effective a while back whenever you paid for advertisements, but it seems like now, whenever you do those, they're effective, but you, you know, you have to do them in a really strategic manner. Like for instance, if we're doing things like model calls, things that require, um, you know, you're giving away something free, something that has like a lot of value to them, you can get a big response. But whenever it comes down to, you know, putting, putting out the advertisement for, Hey, I offer, you know, wedding photography services. A lot of times they're looking for referrals from their friends and family. So what we really like to focus on a lot is those wedding shows so they can get in, you know, get in front of them, kind of meet them, have consultations later, you know, bring them into the office and actually, you know, do that or over zoom. Um, when, it, and Google reviews have been huge for us. Like if you can get your clients that you have to actually write really great Google reviews, that helps you get noticed right away and get you right up to the forefront of uh, the Google page when they're searching instead of having an advertise, you know, ad, ad, uh, you know, whenever you're doing a Google search and you see ad right next to it. Um, we, we found that like, you know, if you have those good Google reviews to back stuff up when it'll, it really draws traffic to your website and gets people to pick up a phone and, and, uh, and give you a ring there. That's some good stuff. So, uh, yes on the, the, the paid ads, but that's not the, that's certainly not a, a major, um, thing. It's the, um, the reviews and some, uh, the personal interaction. All right. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Sure. I appreciate that. All Absolutely. right. So I'm going to ask, what's that? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask that same question now uh, of uh, Adrian. So let me bring her on. Adrian. Hi. So, can can you give me your opinion here on on are are you doing any online advertising such as Google or Facebook and what your what your thoughts are on that kind of thing? Um, I mean, I'm kind of with Aaron on the uh, like the Google reviews. I think are really huge. Um, that's a really good thing. Um, I have never done a Google ad. I wouldn't even know how to go about doing a Google ad. Um, but I will say for me, and like he was saying with like the Facebook ads and the Instagram ads, it is, you have to be very strategic about it. And I say, I, I don't do them often. I probably do maybe like once a quarter or something like that. I'll, um, do like a Facebook ad and, and I have it like, te like synced to Instagram too. So it kind of gets them both at the same time. Um, with that. I never like do the, you can do like the boost post. I never do that. Um, I go in and actually like create the ad because you can do like a specific area. You can, I, you really have to think about like your ideal client. So you think about like, where does my ideal client shop? What do they like to do? What do they, um, you know, where do they go out to eat? Like all of that kind of stuff plays into like who I'm trying to get that advertisement towards. And so when it, you know, you can say like, okay, I know that my ideal client likes to shop at like Nordstrom. So then you t like do some Nordstrom stuff in there and that kind of stuff. So you have to really think about like your ideal client and who you're trying to target with the ads. And I found that just doing it, you know, a couple times a year, um, like three or four, um, tends to just kind of put my business in front of people's face who maybe I haven't, you know, done photos for their friends or something like that. And like, it just, just a little bit more exposure. 
And I found that it is helpful if I just do it, you know, ever so often. It's not something that I do constantly. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so occasionally you're doing it. Um, you're definitely not doing the boost. No. Um, what's your opinion on the boost? I don't, I don't think it really works. <laughs> uh, I just, that, that's just kind of my only opinion. I just don't think it really works very well. Um, and, and I don't know if this is true, but I have heard that once you start boosting posts that your regular posts that aren't boosted don't get shown as much with like different algorithms and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if that's true or not, but the boost never really worked very well for me. So I always go in and like create ads. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Adrian. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask that same question now of Amato. Amato, tell me yeah. what you think about paid ads. Uh, do you do them? And if so, are they, are they helping? Are they making a difference? Yeah. So I'm pretty much going to piggyback off what Aaron and Adrian said. Um, when Your I first started, audio went down, your volume went down. How's that? Is that better? A little bit. I don't know what happened. I didn't change anything. How about that? Is that better? Yes. Oh yeah. Maybe I have to hold the microphone <laughs> closer to my head. Um, so like what Adrian and Aaron said, uh, I'm going to piggyback off of that. Honestly, I, when I first started, I did do a lot of, uh, Facebook ads. I was spending, uh, an awful lot of money that I probably didn't need to, um, both in Facebook ads and, and boosting. Um, it did work initially, but with all of social media, it, the algorithms change, right? So, you know, what they're looking for and so many, strict guidelines that got really, really complicated. Um, so I kind of stopped for a while. Uh, now I very similar to Adrian, I maybe uh, put an ad out there once a quarter, um, maybe once every four months, uh, you know, five, six months or so. Um, and as a senior photographer, it gets even harder because now Facebook put a lot of restrictions on like the age limits um, where I used to be able to put my business out in front of the seniors. Um, now it's the, it's a little bit more difficult to do. Um, so I really got to, you know, focus on, okay, who am I trying to reach on what platform? Usually it's going to be Facebook in this sense. Um, got to try to reach the parents because let's be real. These kids are not on Facebook anymore. Uh, so, you know, where do they shop? You know, what this, it sounds kind of vain, but what kind of cars do they drive? You know, things like that. And I'm filtering my target, to those parents and, and, uh, trying to tailor the ad, uh, to them. Um, I've had some success with it again, not recently. Um, but will I continue to do it? And eh, maybe, um, with boosting, I'll never boost and, uh, a post again for the same reason that Adrian said, um, I did actually see a decline in my organic reach on all of my social media posts after I started boosting uh, posts. So I haven't boosted a post in, I'd say probably about four or five years. Um, and I don't plan on going back anytime soon. Uh, as far as Google ads, I actually ran my very first Google ad, uh, earlier this year. I had absolutely zero idea what I was doing. Uh, but I thought, what, what the heck, you know, let's give it a shot. Um, it was mildly successful. I was able to get about four bookings from it, which, for me, having no idea what the heck I was doing, I thought that was a a, a win. Um, I only ran it for about a for about a month, and just to get people here local, here on the far west side of San Antonio, um, and it seemed to work. Um, I'll probably do it again once I do a little more research and studying and get smarter on uh, how to run an effective Google ad. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so um, some good insight there um, on what you have seen work and what uh, has and hasn't and what you might be trying in the future. So thanks for sharing that. Amara. Yeah. It's always uh, a learning process. That's right. <laughs> uh, speaking of you guys, if you've gotten something out of this so far, will you do me a favor and, and comment over in the um, in the comment section? Uh, so, and I'll put that on the screen. Are you getting something out of this discussion already? If so, tell me in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on 
paid advertising and different things along those lines, different social media, Google ads, that kind of thing. What are what's your experience? Do you have uh, something that you've done that has worked? Do you have something you've done that has not? It's, you, it's failed miserably. And maybe you know the reason why it failed. Let us know in the comments. So I'm going to ask the next question of, of you, Amato. Yeah. Uh, how important is word of mouth marketing in your business? And, and what do you do to encourage referrals? Also, how do you define word of mouth marketing? I've noticed that photographers define it differently. It means different things to different people. And so the answer to a question like this is going to change based on how you define what it means right. to you. Yeah. So without word of mouth, I probably would not have had as successful of a portrait business as I did in California. Um, because I, I would ask every one of my clients, you know, how they found me, um, whether it was the Facebook ad, um, or a boosted post when I was doing those. And most of the time it was, you know, I photographed their, uh, their friend and their friend referred me. Um, so yeah, without word of mouth, uh, I, I would not have had the business that, that I had there. Um, I'm working on building it up here. I'm still relatively new, um, and getting my name out there. Uh, but it's, 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 I can't stress how important it really is. I, I think it's even better than any kind of Google ad. Um, or Facebook ad that anyone, or at least I have ever, have ever done. Um, and then as far as what, uh, how to encourage referrals, uh, that goes along with my, uh, senior rep, teen rep program. Um, I, what do teens want? They want, you know, they want some, uh, some spending cash. So I literally entice them with a $50 gift card for every referral that they send me. And, uh, it's, worked like a charm up to this point and it's real simple they just the the referral um mentions their name and i just go down to cvs or now heb and grab a visa gift card put 50 bucks on it and here you go 50 bucks 50 yeah. bucks if i was a high school kid i'd appreciate that yeah I'm not, and I still appreciate it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it came back and, and bit me in the butt one time. I had one senior uh, where I paid her almost fifteen hundred for the amount of referrals that she sent me. I was like, "All right, cool, thanks." Wow, it was that was a busy year, man. Uh, so uh, that sounds like someone who you need to hire as soon as she gets out of right, hospital. right, so. yeah. <laughs> Um, she, she went, actually went into college, uh, as a marketing major, go figure. Smart choice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, someone's asked a, a question. Let's see, Dave, uh, do you know any, uh, you may or may not be familiar with, with this, but, uh, he's asking, does, does Yelp provide the, the same benefit as a Google review? You know, I've, uh, I've never used Yelp or signed up for it. I, I don't even know if you have to sign up for it. Um, I do have some Google reviews, um, probably not as many as uh, like Aaron um, or Adrian have just because I've asked for them, but I haven't really pushed them. So I probably couldn't answer that very smartly as, you know, at least not as smart as Aaron or Adrian could. When it comes to Yelp, my my experience is uh, that for some businesses, it's, it is very helpful. Um, but there is a, a downside to Yelp that this is a Yelp is a, a marketing company uh, right. and they care uh, about their income a lot. I mean, it's what keep, keeps them alive, keeps them um, but I, I, I used them for a while. It, they said it was free, but they, they made you made me input my my credit card information in, and they were charging me 500 bucks a month. And it went three months before I even noticed. Uh, and so I, I said, I need to cancel it. And they said, no problem. Uh, and they canceled it and then charged me one more time. Uh, and uh. so, you know, the, the, it's not, in my opinion, the, uh, a, a company that I would trust. Um, also, when they did that, they took off all my good reviews and they left one review on there that was bad that clearly wasn't for me. It That's was for terrible. a totally different industry, um, but uh, or not totally different, a very different. So I, I teach photography. So I'm not, uh, I don't do photography as much anymore. I still do it a little bit. But on the Landers Photography School page, there was a, a 
a comment that uh, you know gave a, a low review. I think it was a two or a three. I don't recall out of five stars uh, that said the photographer just hung around and didn't do anything and just st stood in one spot the entire time. Well, it wasn't me. So that was clearly <laughs> on the wrong place. And when I contacted Yelp to talk about taking it off and they said, well, this is a, a real person. So therefore, there's nothing we can do about it. It stays. And I said, well, what about all the good reviews that, that were right. there that aren't there anymore? And they're like, you're not paying anymore. So, yeah. Well, so we don't care about those. So I will never do business with Yelp. Yeah. That's it's a dangerous business. Dangerous. I've heard horror stories about them. With. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my opinion. <laughs> thanks for sharing sharing your thoughts <laughs> on that on that topic and thanks dave for asking the question um so uh amato thanks for answering that question i'm going to move yeah. on now to aaron and see what he feels about that same topic so aaron can you tell me and you may have a, you know you may have a thought about yelp before i move on to the question do you or should i move on all right good i, I hate them <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, like the second that you register your business, you're getting call after call after call. Somebody saying, hey, we can help you reach this many people. And it's just continuous. You're like, stop calling me. But they keep going at it and stuff. So I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Yelp either. I mean, I'll maybe look at Yelp if I'm looking for like restaurant reviews. But in terms of like photography, yeah. it's not where I see a lot of people heading to to look up like, you know, to capture a a cool moment or something in their family's lives. <clears throat> exactly. All right. Yeah. Well, how important is word of mouth marketing and how maybe define it, how you, mm -hmm. how you see it, what that means, but how important is that to your business and, and what are you doing to actively encourage more of it? Absolutely. When it comes to word of mouth marketing, it is like one of the biggest drivers of business. Um, I would say that whenever it comes, sorry, I have a phone ringing in my ear off of my computer here, <laughs> still online. But um, whenever it comes to word of mouth marketing, it all comes down to your client's current impression of you. And when, when it comes to weddings, it, we have a lot of time to really impress our clients and that word of mouth marketing, we tie it highly into like, you know, calling it the Google reviews. When we're reaching out to those clients to ask them for a Google review, we're not just asking like, you know, Hey, leave a Google review. We're saying like, Hey, we really enjoyed working with you guys. We really enjoyed telling the story of your day. Can you think of like a story, like some part of the day that really stood out to you about, you know, about the business and, and whether it be <clears throat> something that we did or some way that we just kind of captured a moment in a certain way, we kind of like lead those reviews by asking particular details about it. Cause a lot of the times they'll forget about you. Like whenever one of their friends are getting married or whether one of their friends need a commercial or like a photo for their business or something like that. Sometimes you can go on the back burner, like just because they've forgotten about you, but the Google review sticks around, you know, forever. It stays on the business. So <clears throat> a lot of times people can see whenever they're looking for photographers, if they notice the person's name, Hey, that's actually my friend. Like they use this person or, you know, they see that you're the one that um, we encourage our clients to share their pictures and also tag us in like Facebook and Instagram um, whenever they're posting those pictures that we take and even the videos too that we do. We encourage them to do that. We also get their consent as well. When it comes to, uh, you know, the week after the wedding, we actually have a, a set of teaser photos that we release and we get their consent to actually tag them in the photos. So that way it's, you know, stride studios that's showing up on their page. So, if their friends are engaged or looking for family pictures, we see it all the time that like, you know, the people that are coming to us, they're like, yeah, you actually did my, my, you know, best friend's wedding. I was actually at that wedding as one of the bridesmen or, you know, or bridesmen, bridesmaids or groomsmen. And uh, I saw the way that you interacted with the, uh, with us and you actually, you know, made it fun instead of just pointing a camera and shooting. You actually, like you actually took time to really, you know, pose us in really cool ways and, and made it fun and interactive whenever we did these shots. And what we do is like, we, we ask, you know, like after we finish taking their shots, we go in and ask for reviews from them as well. It's, it's, it's huge. And so they may forget about you, um, you know, a, a couple of weeks later, but if you get that Google review, you're able to really capture that and, and share it, um, you know, on your website 
on your own pages as well. But um, something we also do as you know, when it comes to like family and friends, I've noticed a lot of family and friends will come to you when you're a photographer and they'll say, yeah, I'll use you for this and I'll use you for that. And maybe it's just my friend, friends and family, but I, I really don't take a crazy amount of pictures of my own friends and family. Like it's usually my clients that are the ones who refer business over to me and, you know, pull them over this way. Um, and, uh, but you know, whenever they, they say they're going to use you for something like say, what, what are you going to use me, you know, for, and like, kind of try to, you know, pick it out. If they have family pictures that they're thinking about taking, you know, the whole thing of like, like following up with them later. Hey, remember during that, that family barbecue, you said that, you know, you wanted to use me for some family photos. Like when are you guys looking to do that? Um, it, it's key, you know, to, to kind of follow up with different things. So as soon as you finish with a client, like, immediately go after that Google review, try to, you know, get like some kind of a story about it. Um, instead of just being like great photographer, like ask them to include some details. Like even if you need to say like, Hey, this really helps my business out by sharing something that really stood out to you about the session and about, you know, my business and whether it be the really good communication we had prior to the uh, the photo shoot or whether it be how fast you got your photos edited and back to you or you know the prints that you ordered whatever it may be is you know getting getting that you know google review is huge and asking them too like is there anyone else that you can think of that is getting married or is there anybody else that you're thinking about that needs to have uh family photos uh taken soon ask them and then if they say there's somebody follow up with them later and actually ask them who that person was or even ask them for that person's information or, you know, do some kind of follow up after you ask for that word of mouth, you know, um, follow, that, that, that word of mouth referral, um, following up with it. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of fall short whenever they ask someone if they have a referral and then they say, yeah, let me, let me contact them. But life gets in the way and you're not really the top priority of, you know, growing your business is not usually their top priority. It's your top priority. So like if they say that there's a referral that they have for you, bug them until, you know, until they just say, oh, I asked them, they said they weren't interested. Like try following up with it. Cause if you don't, they're going to forget about you. And if it's not on a Google review, you know, you're not going to have that, that word of mouth review later on. That, that makes a lot of sense. And it's not that they don't love us and, and uh, think we're wonderful. They have lives going on. Exactly. Uh, and they're doing a million things. And uh, kind of like I say in my, my classes, it's real easy to understand the concepts that I'm bringing up right now when this mm -hmm. is the only thing you're thinking of. But when you leave here and you go, you know, if, if it was a physical class, when you drive home, the million things that are you're responsible for that you're thinking about fill, just, just fall right back in on you. And the thing that you just said 10, five, you know, five, 10, 20 minutes ago mm -hmm. that you do when you got home, you, you're, you're stopping by and getting milk on the way home. You're paying a bill. You're, you're, you're making a, a phone call uh, as you drive. You, you get home and you see your kids, seven, five and two year old uh, mm -hmm. that, that takes your mind away from, oh yeah, I said I was going to to tell someone about that business exactly because it's important to us and it was important to them mm -hmm. while they were there but once that once those million things start coming back in and so i, I have come across photographers who have, have said you know people all the time tell me they're going to fill in the blank and then it seems like they never mm -hmm. do first of all they might have because just because mm -hmm. you refer someone doesn't mean that person calls that business. So they may have done what you said, um, but they've got mm -hmm. a million things going on in your life. And so your proactive approach, Aaron, is, is fantastic mm -hmm. because we want to get that information. Besides, it's our responsibility to reach out. And so we get that information from them and make the phone call ourselves and say, exactly, told me to call you. And so, yeah, exactly. Good, good stuff, Aaron. Good stuff. Yeah. My pleasure. Appreciate it. All right, so now I'm going to ask that same question of, of Adrian. Bring her on. So, Adrian, uh, how important is word of mouth marketing to you? Um, I would say that is my number one source of marketing is word of mouth. Um, I I know there are photographers out there who require, like, in their contracts, you know, if 
they their client posts their pictures online that they are supposed to tag them or something like that. Um, I don't do any of that. Um, I don't require it. I just I feel like I form a really good relationship with my clients. Um, I provide a client closet. So a lot of the times they're coming to the studio and they're trying on dresses and we're, we're just kind of chit chatting just about life and about their kids. And I'm really getting to know them. And I share, you know, about my kids and my family. And I feel like they're getting to really know me too, to where we almost form like this, like friendship level. And, um, where they're comfortable with me and I'm comfortable with them. And, and I just tell them like at the end of our session, I'm just like, you know, I, I'll post some sneak peeks. I don't tag people because I know that like as women, especially like we're our own worst critics. And so I don't want to post something and tag somebody and then be like, Oh, I hate that picture of myself or something like that. So I tell people, I'm like, I'm not going to tag you, but you are welcome to share it. I, I love it when you share it. I love it when you tag me and it just kind of goes from there. And most people are so excited to get the sneak peeks. And I like to post sneak peeks of like the special moments, not just everybody like standing and looking and smiling at the camera. I like them to be pictures that like make you feel a certain way or, you know, just kind of like make your heart stop for a minute. And those are the ones that people get so excited about that they like instantly share and then they're gushing over and then their family's gushing over and their friends. And um, I would, that's just the way that I get most of my clients. They see their friends' pictures online and then they're just like, that's beautiful. I have to have that same thing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. They, and that is um, when we see, we've got, to, again, we've got a million things going on in our lives. And it is because we are seeing something that sometimes causes us to be able to stop and think of that. It's it's uh -huh. not that, that uh, you know, mom doesn't want a, a photograph of her family. She's just doing a million things right now. And that right. photograph that her friend just put up caused her to think, I got to have that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, so the next question is for you. But before I okay. ask it, guys, if this is resonating with you, if you're hearing this, if this is making some sense, will you do me a favor? Just go over to the comments right now and just enter the word yes. Just yes. Now, if you want to go a little further and, and share why it's resonating with you, then please do that as well. The things that are connecting with you, of course, I'm encouraging that throughout this entire show, um, but in asking questions and, and all that kind of thing. So do that right now. And if you want to tell the uh, panelists, thank you, I appreciate you because they're they're taking time out of their, their um, busy lives, then hey, it's a good idea to do that too. Let them know you appreciate them for being here. All right. So Adrian, this question is for you. Okay. Do you offer any special promotions, any discounts, any incentives that, uh, th that have that purpose of attracting either clients or to increase or um, encourage repeat clients? Um, so no, I made the mistake um, early on um, in my career and I did like a book in the next month or book for the, this next month and receive, you know, X, Y discount. And I found with that, that the people who booked me early, who didn't receive the discount were then like upset because then they're like, I didn't get a discount and I booked you months ago, you know, that kind of thing. And then having to go back and tell people, well, okay, well you get it, but you don't. And you, and so like, it was, it just got kind of messy. So I never offer discounts. I, what I do though, is, um, I offer, so like right now, Texas heat, nobody really wants to do like family sessions outdoors when everybody's sweating and I don't want to Photoshop sweat out of everybody's shirts. So I I'll run like special. So I'm like, I do like glitter minis for little girls in the studio. So um, I'll send out an email and um, I tell all my clients like sign up for like specials through my website for emails. And I'll just say, Hey, for the month of June, I'm offering these glitter sessions for little girls or, Oh, I'm offering mom and me sessions for, you know, in May at this like discounted price, but I never run specials on my like regular family sessions. Um, with that being said, 
if I do offer, I do um, maternity and newborn sessions and I tell the clients up front, like if you book both of them at the same time, you get 10% off of your newborn session. So once we do the full price maternity session, then they get the discount on the newborn session. I think that's it. Cool. Yeah. And that I, I've, I've heard similar stories like that as well, where uh, if a discount was offered, it, it caused some kind of unforeseen problem, uh, not yeah. Uh, one you wouldn't want to repeat again uh, and and using it strategically like you're talking about um, uh, is is one way that it works. Um, but yeah, I found the same thing where discounting and um, uh, percentages off for photography sessions don't necessarily have the intended result that you're after or there's something else that we hadn't considered that isn't necessarily what we want. Uh, and so a lot of photographers, not there's plenty who do it and it's you know more power to it. whatever works for your target market is what you should be doing and it is different for every target market um, but uh, generally speaking a uh, a low volume portrait photographer is not really benefited by discounts and other types of of, uh, of that kind of promotion other types of promotion work very well but that type of promotion generally doesn't work well for the low volume portrait photographer. It probably does work well for uh, for many sessions or those who are high volume, who, whose goal is to try to get a large number of photographers with them. Do you agree with that or does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. And I would not consider myself high volume. I prefer to like take my time and take on, you know, a set number of clients every month. So I can just kind of put all my effort into that and make it more of like an experience than kind of just like a run through, you know, next client, next client. And so I, I would not consider myself like high volume. And I think that like personally, if I booked a session with a photographer that I loved and then the next month they were running a special, I would almost feel kind of slighted, you know, just kind of like, oh man, I should have waited a month to book and you know then i would have got this great discount so sure. i i understand why people were upset about it and i was just like you know i'm just not gonna do that anymore yeah yeah and it's a good example of we try all kinds of things yes. and some of the things we we tried work pretty well and other things don't but we learn from them and we grow and we try something else that that does work and eventually we get things pretty squared away. It doesn't mean we ever stop learning and trying new things because, well, we do. We love that kind of stuff as creatives. So uh, I, do you feel like it's important um, to uh, go through the mistakes or to take a, a class or have a mentor that helps you jump past some of those mistakes? Um, I feel both. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's, almost like a rite of passage kind of to go through like some of the bumps and some of the hurdles to like really appreciate it when you're finally like, okay, I sort of have this figured out now. Um, but I 100% think that it is important to find a mentor who kind of aligns with what you're wanting to do. Uh, for me, I found photographers who were like the style that I liked and that kind of thing. And um, I did like business mentoring and that kind of stuff um, and still made mistakes even after that. But I think that if you yeah, can avoid sure. a lot of those in the very beginning and like set yourself up for success from the beginning, it would be very helpful, which is why I wish I had something like this when I first started. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that and uh, those answers and the follow-up questions as well. I appreciate that, Adrian. So I'm going to ask that same question now of Amato. So Amato, can you tell us um, uh, uh, if you have any types of special promotions, discounts, incentives that uh, that have a goal of either attracting prospects or encouraging re repeat clients? Uh, the short answer is no. <laughs> um, discounts is a dirty little word. Uh, I, I hate uh, the word discount. Um, you hit the nail on the head. We all try it at one point, especially when, when we're first starting out. We're kind of just throwing the, the 
spaghetti on the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, and I found out real quick that someone who would have been a full paying client was just waiting for a discount. They waited to the next month when, oh, Fourth of July minis are going to come up and they're going to be super cheap or, you know, back to school minis are going to come up. They're going to be super cheap. They would just wait for that um, when they would have otherwise been a full paying client. So it took me about five years to figure that out. Once I figured it out, I said, yep, no more discounts. Um, I'll still do promos uh, every now and then. I kind of, I just did one that ended uh, a week ago on my birthday. I did it for my birthday. Um, it was a complete and utter failure. <laughs> I got zero bookings from it, but I was okay with it. Um, I was just trying to get my, my name out there um, and the business out there in front of people. Uh, but yeah, no discounts. I feel like they cheapen the brand. It's not the type of photographer that I want to be. I, I don't want to be known as that low end um, budget photographer. Uh, when people come to me, they know they're going to spend a pretty penny um, or at least what they would think. They're, they're going to invest um, a fair amount of, of, of money, but they're also going to get some of the best portraits they've ever seen um, of their child, of their, of their high school senior in return that they're going to keep forever. Um, and there's no way that I want to to cheapen that at all. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and it, it, there are photographers of all types, and it doesn't yep. mean that those who do it are doing it wrong. They, they may, be, not. may be the right thing for that particular photographer. Could be. And with low volume, it generally isn't, but that's generally speaking. There are very specific right. instances or or some kind of a special project that that uh, maybe is, is beneficial. Uh, so yeah. if there's a, a specific reason uh, that helps with the overall goal, well, then maybe it does make sense to do things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, finding uh, businesses that are similar and, and modeling in some ways, those things is a good idea. Finding mentors mm -hmm. uh, is, is a good thing. Um, and also looking at those who you don't want to be and noticing what it is they're doing and making sure you avoid those things. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, uh, there's a place for everybody. Yeah, there is. Right. Um, sure. And just because I don't want to, you know, follow a certain business model doesn't mean that, you know, it's the wrong one, like you said. You know, it works exactly. for some people and for some people it doesn't. We just stick with what we want to do and it's our business, right? It's it's what we want to get out of it. That's um, right. So that's that's my stance on that. <laughs> that's exactly right. And I agree with you, Amato. Thank you for answering that question. Uh, let's ask that same question now of Aaron. Uh, Aaron, how do you feel about this one? Are you guys... Uh, offering some special promotions or discounts. I mean, you may have a good reason for it. Maybe you're trying to attract a certain type of prospect. Maybe you're trying to uh, encourage repeat clients. There, there may be a good reason for it, but is this something that you guys do? We do use the dirty word discount sometimes. So <laughs> what we do though, is we use it in terms of like strategy for our business. So what we do, especially on the wedding side, um, we strategically place those discounts around the wedding shows. So we're not offering discounts just, <clears throat> you know, off of every single thing that we're doing. But what we want to do is we want to funnel in as many clients as we can from those wedding shows. And what we find strategically is that, you know, discounts, you know, help to make them say yes a lot quicker. As long as those discounts aren't like an indefinite discount or you're throwing out too many discounts in your, in your business. Um, we do it strategically. We also don't really like, you know, um, advertise it, you know, all the time. It's usually strategic moments. Like whenever we do wedding shows, that's mainly the time that we're doing discounts for weddings. Um, and because we dedicate our time for meeting with like 30, 40 clients after these wedding shows to go through all of the different package options that we have for photo and video. And so that discount is just another way of getting them to say yes quicker because it can work the opposite way. If you don't have any discounts, you may have that client that's going to visit with a bunch of other videographers or photographers, you know, two, three, you know, four weeks down the road because they know your price is not going to change. It's going to stay the same. So it's an extra kind of incentive to get them to say yes earlier on if they know 
after, you know, after this week is over, that discount is going to disappear. So it can be a, a pro and it be a con. I've seen that it works as a con whenever you misuse it. Like whenever you use that discount all the time, everybody is going to be wanting to wait until the next discount is coming around. I had one bride whenever I was meeting with her that actually asked me, so, you know, is this, uh, is, am I going to see this price being discounted? Like, you know, to this rate here, you know, two, three weeks later, or is there another show that you guys are doing that you're going to provide an even bigger discount? And I let her know, like this discount is going to be good for this month here. And then the next time that we're doing a bridal show is at the end of the year. And it's going to be the same discount or possibly less of a discount because of, you know, the economy and all that stuff that's going into play, cost of doing business going up. Um, so I'm, you know, out, out. You know, I'm up front with her, letting her know, hey, if you want to wait seven months to meet with me again, the price may not be the same, but this discount is only good until, you know, the end of this month here. So it really helps with, you know, moving the moving the ball forward and getting them to sign with you. Um, but, you know, customers are not coming to us asking us for a discount. It's not an expectation. And I feel like the, the expectation is usually set with the dis, you know, the expectation of the discount is usually set. If they're seeing on your Facebook page, your website all the time discounts, you know, sign up for this is discounted to this. We also don't like to share like, like what those um, like what the price is for the, the services um, so, you know, they're not looking at it as, oh, this is the cheapest option to go. Because um, what, what sometimes happens is, is that whenever clients see um, that you're discounting something by like 50, 75 percent, they're, you know, they're smart people. They, they, they're asking themselves like, well, like, what was it like, really, you're discounted it that much? it can really damage your brand if all you're known for is just the deep discounts. Um, but doing discounts in a very strategic manner um, is, is what you want to aim for and then not being known as the person who does the discounts. But yeah, to answer the question, like we really do use discounts in a terms of like working in our favor to get a yes to like weddings in particular uh, getting a yes. So we know how we're lining up the year for the next year and a half with these clients. Um, otherwise, if, you know, if we're calling them and following up with them later on, there's no, there's no fire underneath them to say yes at that moment, if they're not going to have that discount being removed at a particular time. So we like to really be strategic about like how um, we're doing the discounts, how we lay it out to give them enough time to think about stuff when we do these wedding shows, we're not only offering the discount right then and there if you sign off because it's a rush decision. And this is like one of the biggest decisions that they have to make with a wedding. So we give them an ample amount of time to you know, think about it. But also it gives me a reason to follow up with them and say, hey, you know, um, I'm going to follow up with you, you know, maybe a day before this discount's going to be over just to see if you guys, you know, had a, had a chance to decide. And, you know, it gives me a justified reason, like to keep, you know, to follow up with them, like, hey, just wanted to let you know that this discount was coming up to an end. I just wanted to see if you guys had made up your mind or if you needed, you know, if you had any questions for me. So it, it is a way of like, you know, you can use it in a very strategic way um, to not devalue your business. But again, if you use it and you abuse it, like, people will be going to you all the time because you're the cheapest or they'll wait for that discount to arrive. Um, but yeah, just being strategic about it. Cause you can, you can definitely abuse it and people will see it. And then you get that reputation on you. Using it as a tool. Yep. That totally makes yep. sense. And uh, Kara has a question for you. Yeah. Uh, do you guys do uh, photography and videography? We do. Yeah. So we, uh, we, we do photography and videography for weddings. We also do commercial productions too, like with the Baptist health system, um, the, uh, uh, what's it called the what's that new port port uh tech port we actually helped with creating that video that you see before they play concerts and stuff like that is a pretty cool project very cool yeah very cool thanks for asking that question kara uh, and, and aaron can i ask you the the next question yeah for sure 
All right. So uh, do you offer, that's the previous question. Do you, uh, do you use networking and building relationships with other professionals to generate client referrals? Absolutely. Like that's the biggest thing in, in the photography industry, even like video and like commercial production industry is that when you get in the, like, I call it like the selfish mindset of like, you know, no, they're going to steal my client or, or whatnot. Like if you make really great photos and if you make like a really good product, the clients will come to you. I feel like what takes place in the industry is that a lot of times people, they, they think that this client's going to go over to this next, you know, next person down the road and stuff. If you make good products, people will come to you. And there's a lot of clients out there that, you know, we can share with each other. So like if we have a, uh, a wedding that we're booked up for and we can't do it, we refer that out to a photographer that can do it. Or, you know, we, we, you know, we have some clients that reach out to us that are like looking for commercial clients to, you know, to go in and shoot like a commercial for their business or photos for their business. And they have a tight deadline and it's better for them to help their client and say, you know, I know someone that can do it, you know, in this area and stuff and refer it over to us and us take care of that client. Um, than it is for them to say, oh, I don't really know, you know, like, you know, maybe we should just push the deadline back a little bit. Um, we, we always like to refer like, you know, cl uh, clients out if we're not able to handle it or if it's a specialty. Obviously, we want to handle if we if we can, uh, if we can accommodate for it. Um, but yeah, like it, we definitely are all about the referral thing. Um, I also like the fact uh, that one thing that Stride Studios is all about is making sure that we bring in people who like are willing to grow and learn in the industry. Uh, we always like to help out uh, different, you know, up and coming photographers that like for second shooting gigs, like that are looking for help with second, you know, wanting to get into weddings. Um, second shooting is the best way to kind of get involved in weddings and not have all the pressure of like being the one who's responsible for capturing every single moment um, without flaw. Um, we, we like to bring in people. We also bring in uh, production assistance as well when it comes to the commercial side, like whenever people are looking to get into like the commercial side of the business. Um, we, we bring them in and we train them up to like whatever role they want to be in the, in the film industry or even the uh, photography industry as well. We, we love to help people out. And in, in turn, they, they are some of our biggest source when it comes to client referrals. Like they have friends that have businesses, they have friends and family that are, uh, are getting married and they, they know that we have that heart for like helping out the film community in San Antonio and the, you know, the photography community in San Antonio. So they're willing to help us out because we've helped them out with like growing in the, uh, in the field that they're looking to grow in. A lot of stuff, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I was long winded. <laughs> well, I mean, you're just, you're just sharing what's, what's uh, your experience, what's in your world. And uh, you know, that's what we, as, as a, uh, you know, viewers are, are going to, you know, take from this is, is three different opinions. There's one of them, of course, but three different opinions on these subjects. So I definitely appreciate you sharing your experiences and, and the things that you uh, know to be true and the things that you assume are true and, you know, all this good stuff. Yeah. Thank you for sharing it. So uh, the same question now is going to Adrian. So let's bring Adrian up. So Adrian, are you using networking? Are you, are you doing things to help build relationships with other professionals to help generate clients? Yes. So um, I wouldn't say like when I first started building like relationships with other photographers, uh, it really, my goal wasn't to get clients. It was more of just, I wanted friends who understood what I was going through and, you know, we could talk business and I could like, we could bounce ideas off of each other and that kind of thing. And um, it's led to like some really great friendships. And with that comes referrals. Um, there's, I have photographer friends online that I've been friends with for years that I don't actually know that we've never met face to face. 
but I know their work. I know how they are as professionals. I feel confident sending clients to them if for some reason I can't do what they're needing me to do. Or um, like, for example, I don't like to do extended family sessions. It kind of gives me a little bit of anxiety with there's like 30 people up there and everybody wants just like the stand and smile at the camera stuff. And um, so I refer those out. I have a handful of um, wonderful photographers who I'm like, you know what, this isn't my thing, but so-and-so does it and they're amazing and kind of goes hand in hand. Um, if somebody's looking for like a newborn photographer and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that, then they kind of send them my way. And uh, it's been really great. And it just seems smart. I mean, yeah. I understand the other point of view, though, that uh, people, there, there are some who say you have to do whatever it takes to get to a yes. Uh, and I'm not part of that that group. I think you have to do whatever it takes to get to a yes within your own target market, not with a period at the end of the sentence. And I think that some people uh, believe that you do whatever. And sometimes it's the right thing. It depends on the type of, of company that you want to run and what you want to be known for. It's just hard to be known for something specific when you accept everything. I, it, it'd be like a restaurant that had every different type of food in it. It wouldn't get really known for some specific dish probably because it has everything. Besides, the menu is going to be ridiculously long and we get analysis paralysis when we look at too many different variables, too many yeah. different choices. And so I think what you're doing of uh, having these relationships with other photographers and referring out the things that don't fit what you're trying to do, the things that, that bring you joy, the things that you're best at, I think having those people to refer to is fantastic. And it's reciprocal. They yeah. are working on the things they're working on. They're sending you business, I bet. Yes, 100%. And I feel like it's in the beginning, especially when you're trying to build your business, it's hard to say no. Like, it's hard to say, it is. like, oh, you want to give me money? Like, <laughs> no, I don't want it. You know, like, it, it's really hard to turn down clients. But I would find myself editing these galleries of these photos that I just hated. And I didn't feel any connection to them. I didn't feel like they weren't bringing me joy. And I was like, I don't want to post this because then somebody else is going to want to book the same session and I don't want to do this again. So it was, um, it took a long time for me to reach a point to where I was just like, Nope, I don't want to do that. And, um, it's nice now that I, I can do that. And then I found the stuff that like truly makes me happy and that I want to shoot and I could just prefer everything else out and they refer stuff back. So it's nice. Nice. Thank you for sharing that, Adrian. Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask that same question now of Amato. So let's bring him on. So Amato, tell me about working with other um, professionals. Uh, so networking, uh, building relationships. W what are you doing and how is that helping you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I definitely network and uh, build friendships with other photographers, especially um, some videographers. Um, because I don't do video, uh, but it's, I'm very specific. I'm very um, yeah, specific to which photographers I network with because I don't want to network with someone who is, who shoots everything under the sun. Um, because since I shoot high school seniors, um, if someone comes to me asking for maternity or maternity or newborn, I'm not going to photograph it because that's not what I do, but I do know someone that I can refer them to. Um, and the same goes with them because all they do is maternity and newborn. Um, if they get a high school senior uh, inquiry, they send them to me. So it's it's very specific. It's someone who's niched down um, quite a bit. Um, and it's it really helped, especially when I was in California, I shared a studio with a photographer there with just that exact uh, uh, situation. She was a maternity and newborn photographer and family photographer. I did high school seniors and little families on the side and we would bounce clients back and forth. Um, if, even if she had a family that she didn't have room for, she would send them to me because I would photograph a family and same thing. Um, it would just reciprocate that. Uh, and it's definitely something that I'm looking to build here now that I'm in San Antonio. Um, and the group that we're in here on Facebook, um, 
is really going to help with that. Definitely. Yeah, it's, I'm glad that you said it that way. Cause we, we aren't able, we can press the button in front of anything, right. but that's not what is, is, uh, you know, there's, there's certain things that, that we enjoy more than others things, right. things that bring us joy, uh, that bring us happiness. And besides, we're not going to become the best at everything. Right. So therefore be the person that you tell your clients that you are. Yeah. yeah you're telling your clients, I'm, I'm going to do my best for you. But what does that mean? If someone started yesterday, their best is not equivalent to someone who started five, 10 years ago. Right. So your best is not the, the goal here. Yes. Giving your best. That's a, that's a bottom line. That's a baseline, but that's, and, and for marketing purposes, yeah, I'm not saying don't say the words because it matters. But when we focus in on the thing that we enjoy the most, we become really good at that one thing. Mm -hmm. And we get good at marketing that one thing and selling that one thing and becoming the person that we really want to be at that one thing. Exactly. So uh, you have uh, someone made a comment I wanted to, to bring up. So this is Jeff Truitt. Uh, and he was, and tell me your opinion on this. You really need to have at least one photographer you can call on. I mean, you're going to get sick at some point. You need to be yep. able to call on somebody. Um, what if you've got a bigger job and you need an extra person? So thank you for, for bringing that to our attention, Jeff. Um, what do you feel about that, Amato? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, that's, that hit the nail on the head. Um, you definitely want to have someone uh, there in case you do get sick. Cause you're right. We're, we're going to get sick or uh, a family emergency emergency comes up or the dog starts puking all over the living room and you got to clean that up. Um, yeah. Not, not that I've experienced anything like that before, but um, you definitely got to have someone there and someone to lend a helping hand. If you do, I've done extended family sessions. Uh, I wasn't too thrilled with it because it's just a lot of people looking right at the camera, but having a second photographer there to, you know, take different groups and take, you know, photos of different groups. So I didn't have to do it all. It's just, it's cold. Thank you for that, Amato. I'm going to ask you the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, before I do that, uh, you guys make sure you're hitting that like button and that love button. If you're liking what you're hearing, let us know. Put it in the comments too. Uh, so when when uh, Amato gives you that uh, that wonderful piece of advice, don't just nod your head and say, "Oh yeah, good stuff." Tell him, let him know. Say, "Man, that was good, Amato. Thanks for sharing that." Or if it's Adrian that says it, or if it's Aaron that says it, let them know. Interaction. Tell them that you like what they're saying. Um, so here's the next question: How are you using social media platforms to attract prospects and engage with clients? All right, I was waiting for this question. Um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm going to give you and any uh, high school senior photographers out there one of my biggest secrets. Um, and it's it's kind of awkward to start it, but once once it gets going, it's just like a snowball. So on social media, I'm trying to get in front of the senior, um, and usually they're on Instagram and uh, Snapchat. I'm not on Snapchat. I'm I'm too old for that. I can't figure it out. But I've got my Instagram, but I've got to get in front of the senior, right? I've got to get my name out there. I've got to get my images out there. Um, I've got to get them to see uh, see my name. So I will actually go on Instagram and search a local high school um, around here. We, we have Harlan High School and uh, Sotomayor, um, Taft. I'm in that area. So I'll go, I'll look at their, um, one of their school pages, be it, I don't know, the, the band. And I'll go to their followers because who's following the Harlan High School band? Usually Harlan High School band members. So I'll scroll through there and I will click on almost every single profile. And usually these kids will have something on their profile that tells you, you know, what graduating class they're in. Um, and if I see that instant follow, all right, now go to the next one, keep going, follow, 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 follow. Um, I try to do about 40 a day. Sounds like a lot. Um, and it really is 20 in the morning, 20 in the evening. And I'm just following these kids. All right in the hopes and mo more often than not they follow back and that's what i want i want them to follow back so that now i can start posting um, on instagram they can see my images um, i'll post to my stories these kids are all about you know most of their profiles have no posts they just post stories all over the place um, so i'll post stories that's what they're into um, and it could just be 
a, a senior photo from heck, you know, three, four years ago. Um, it's on my Instagram for a reason because I want them to see it. So I will share it to my story. Um, and I just did that last night. And in a matter of about three hours, I had 95 views, well, actually less than that, uh, probably about two hours, uh, 95 views from most of the new, uh, just from Harlan High School here um, across the street from me um, that viewed it and liked it. And then I turn around and I like their stories. You know, I like, uh, I like, and I comment on their posts um, just to keep my name out there. And uh, I did that in California and I can't tell you how successful that was in getting in front of the seniors. And that's how I use it. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Uh, you've got a strategic use of that particular tool, uh, and uh, which means you know what you're heading towards, what you're trying to get as an end result. It's kind of like a, a road trip. and uh, You know where you're going, so right. therefore you know what path to take in order to get there. Yep. Uh, and uh, too many of us photographers, and tell me what your thoughts are on this, too many of us photographers are just wandering. We're, we're trying all the good stuff, the, the things that we, we, we put good things in front of us. We're intelligent. Um, so we put good things in front of us. But the difference between a photographer succeeding and a photographer struggling is not the difference between a good choice and a bad choice. That part's not too difficult at all. Right. The difference is between good and what's right and the only way to know what's right is if you know where you're heading mm -hmm. that is what tells us that the tool is the right tool for the job It'd be like going to home depot or lowe's and saying are these hammers good tools well yeah but if your goal is to um, put in uh, uh, the toilet you're probably not going to be using a hammer right so it doesn't matter that they're good or bad mm -hmm. so good or bad's not what matters as much as the difference between good and right. And the only way to know is by defining your final, de your, your destination. Where are we heading? Right. So you, you're in agreement with that. Yeah. And I mean, you, you got to know who you're trying to go after on social yeah. media, you know, and who you're trying to get in front of. Um, and sometimes, especially for high school seniors, sometimes it feels a little awkward. I'm not going to lie um, to just follow a random teenager, you know, um, but I'm doing it as my business page and, uh, they see that and like I said, they end up more often than not following back. And I don't want to say it's hook, line and sinker at that point, but that gets me in front of them. And then when their senior pictures come up, Hey mom, dad, you know, uh, there's this photographer, um, uh, Amala Rivas, uh, can we call him? And then my phone rings. Nice. I love that part of the story. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mother. Yep. I'm going to ask that same question now of Aaron. So let's bring him on. So Aaron, uh, tell me about how you're um, using social media. For sure. Well, I mean, I believe the average is a, a two and a half hours that people, the average person spends on social media every single day. And wow. so that is one of your biggest windows to get in front of your client is through social media. And so you have to ask yourself, who's your target client? Like, like, what do, what are they into? Like what out of your your business would intrigue them to take the next step and actually follow you and then give you a call. And so whenever you look at content that you're posting, you want it to be targeted around that. So what we like to do with our page, we're actually doing a rebrand as well to where we have Stride Studios and then we have another Instagram page that we're opening up and Facebook page called Stride Stories. That's kind of like the you know the offset of Stride Studios and that we're going through that this year. So we're actually seeing in real time how we can grow our audience and you know really be targeted towards weddings and the Stride Studios being more along the lines of commercial um, type of work. And so we're in that process of that rebrand that just started this past year here. So it's been pretty, uh, pretty exciting to see just, you know, us, you know, targeting brides, targeting people that are like getting married and posting about that. A lot of times what we like to do is think about the content that we're going to be putting up and making sure that that's engaging content for that client. If it's something that is just, you know, doesn't speak to your brand, doesn't speak to, you know, the, the client as something that they would actually want to follow, they're not going to. And it's you, you're dealing with tons of competition out there when it comes to uh, photography, especially like, you know, photographers, there's so many out there. So 
why would they want to follow you? And you have to figure out what it is that like you're posting that would keep them coming back. Also, how much you're posting as well. You do you want to go the quality route or the you know um, or the volume route? And tend to, uh, like you need to find that middle ground or like go with the quality route because if somebody goes to your Instagram and there's a bunch of pages you know pictures and they're like I really like that one but then you posted this other one just because it you needed you felt like you needed to post something that day like go the quality route because if they see out of that you know story that that there's like a multiple amount of pictures that just don't feel like this you know quality photographer they they're not going to follow you because there's not that consistency behind it. And so just make sure whenever you're posting your content on social, think about who your target client is and pick the best of the best to put in front of them and make sure that you're posting enough to where, you know, you're popping up on that client's stories. Um, so they're, they're seeing content coming from you because once they're seeing you multiple times, then whenever something comes up, they're going to be looking for a photographer and they're swiping through and you're showing up on their story all the time and you're constantly posting really great content that they love. They're going to be giving you a call because again, two and a half hours, the average amount of time they're spending on their phone, they'll look into you. On the back end, they'll look at your website to make sure that the website is cohesive with your social media page. So I've seen it like time and time again, where someone will have a really great Instagram, but then the second you go over to their website, their pictures are like five, six, seven years old, and they're old and outdated and the, the photographers honed their craft. And so the pictures on Instagram look great, but then the client feels like, uh, I don't know, are they which style are they doing now? What, you know, which photographer am I going to get? Am I going to get this one? Or am I going to get this other style that was the older, you know, feel or like, you know, whenever you're just starting out or whatnot. So constantly keeping everything on all your social media platforms up to date with the content that, you know, you're progressing as a photographer, you're getting better. You're hopefully looking into ways to constantly get better. And you need to make sure that your social media, your website, everything across the board speaks to your brand. Because if one of those things are out of place, it's it's really going to throw off the whole thing. That's right. That makes sense. I mean, we've been to websites where the images uh, or last post was a year ago or five years mm -hmm. ago. And it makes us think that they're out of business. Exactly. Yep, exa so. yep. <laughs> So it has to be kept fresh. We we have to know that there's something there. Those can be done on uh, somewhat automated things. But yeah, having those images fresh. And besides, you're definitely proud of some of the new stuff you've created. Exactly. So, I mean, you want to do it anyway. So yeah, part make it part of the plan. Thank you, Aaron. You're Appreciate welcome. that. Uh, and so I'm going to ask that, that same question now of Adrian. So let's bring Adrian on. Hey, Adrian. Uh, so tell me how you're using social media. Um, I would actually say that I'm not the best at social media. Um, it's one of the things always on my to-do list that I have to make a conscious effort to go in and do. It's not just something that I'm just like on all the time. Um, so I try and post new content on like my Instagram or Facebook or, um, at least once a week. Um, but sometimes that's a stretch for me, um, just because life happens. And, um, so, but I do agree with what he was saying about keeping everything like con very consistent and posting with a purpose, not posting just to post. And, um, for me, I found that especially nowadays, like people, they're looking at stories like crazy. So for me being a family photographer, I feel like it's really important for people to feel like they know me. Um, feel like they know my family, feel like they know just kind of like a small part of my life. And so I post stories about like, this is what I'm doing today. Or like, oh, here's my kids running around and just kind of like a glimpse into my personal life so that they feel comfortable with me. And so when they're thinking of like a photographer, they're like, oh, you know, she has three small children. I have small children. This would be I think she's a good fit and just things like that, because I found that people are scrolling the stories a lot more than they're actually going and looking at like my Instagram homepage. 
Yeah. Okay. I can definitely see that. Thank you for sharing it. Huh? <laughs> All right. So we are coming to the, uh, the end of our time. And so I wanted to give each one of you a, an opportunity to share some closing thoughts about today's topic. Would you like to start? Sure. Um, and it was actually the next question I think that we didn't have time to get to. So I'll just kind of end on that. Um, okay, good. For me, um, next to word of mouth is uh, my website. Um, so that is huge. I took a whole course on SEO and how to get ranked in the top like Google searches and that kind of thing. And I would say that if people don't come to me, I always ask me like, hey, how'd you find me? How'd you get my information? It's either referral from a friend or directly from my website. So definitely work on website and your SEO. Thank you, Adrian. Mm -hmm. Good, good advice. Uh, lots of good uh, experiences that you've been able to share with us today. So I want to thank you yeah. for for being here and doing yes, that. I'm going to bring all three of you on here in just a, a second. But uh, thank you for for sharing your closing thoughts. Yes, thanks. Let's bring on. Let's see who's going to be next. How about Amato? Uh, so Amato. Can yeah. you share with us some close, closing thoughts for today? Yeah, definitely. Um, we got to play the long game. Uh, marketing, uh, finding finding your right client, attracting your right client. It's, it's not something that happens overnight. Um, stick with it. Um, don't let it frustrate you. Lord knows I've been there where intrusive thoughts thoughts start to click uh take over and i want to like give everything away for free just to get people in um fight that urge stick with it stick to your guns um because it is you, you have you have to look beyond uh the horizon and see you know what's what's going to come at you um establish yourself as an expert um, the best way i found to do that three simple words um in person sales um as soon as I started doing that, um, I started getting the people that uh, that I wanted, um, and those were the the clients that wanted something on their walls, wanted something on their coffee tables. Um, and it took a while to get there. Uh, I just had to be patient and uh, be brave enough to jump in headfirst um, into those in-person sales, uh, and then, yeah, just continue to stick with it, stay consistent. Exactly. Um, for a lot of us in person sales is the, the way to go there. There's three major types, um, but for low volume photo photographers, uh, the low volume is, is the way to go or, or the in-person sales. Um, and it used to just be called sales because right. that's the way that it was always done. <laughs> you, you, you held your, the hand of your clients to do something that you're supposed to be the expert on. Now that doesn't mean that those who don't handhold their their clients all the way through are doing it wrong there's just different business models there's different ways to do it there's, right. yeah so there's three major ones the the um uh, shoot and burn and burn came from when we used to have to burn them to a cd right uh, so that's where that name comes from so those who are you know started within the last five years may not know what the heck that means <laughs> um because no one uses cds anymore um but uh and uh, the second one is post and pray where you you you're not necessarily giving the digital files, but you are uh, trying to sell uh, prints, but you're putting them online so someone mm -hmm. could take a look at them and and purchase them. And for events, that's probably the way to go. Weddings, most uh, definitely. I've I've seen weddings done as in person sales as well. But mm -hmm. as far as um, uh, portrait photographers, I, I generally speaking, I'm going to be recommending to at least my students the uh, in person sales where they're hand holding their client all the way through. And the reason is because you're the expert as the photographer. Right. They aren't the expert. They don't they don't um, necessarily know how to print in the best way. They don't know how to frame. They don't know how to install. If you want to be full service and not everybody does. In fact, most people, most photographers won't be full service. Um, then you would install those those prints on their wall. Right. Uh, so um, it just depends on, you know, to what degree you want to give service to those those clients. It, there isn't um, uh, when I state the things that, that I do or state ideas, it's not because one's bad and one's good. These are all tools at a toolbox in a toolbox or at a tool store. And you choose the ones that are best for you and the people who you want to serve. 
Right. And that's the bottom line. It's it's sometimes it's um, uh, speed. If you're only doing headshots for business headshots, there's no reason to go through the in-person sales process. Right. You can you can skip that. It would be appropriate in many instances to skip that. And I'm generalizing because I can think of some examples where you wouldn't want to skip that. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Amato. Yep. Um, anything else that I that you wanted to say before? I mean, that's no. good closing. I, I mean, just <laughs> just stick with it. Be consistent right. and and be patient. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here and, and sharing your experiences. Yep. I mean, it's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So let's bring on Aaron. Aaron, can you share with us your closing thoughts for this evening? Absolutely. I mean, when it comes down to being a photographer, you're in a highly competitive industry. There are lots and lots of clients out there that, you know, there are so many different options. So you have to ask yourself, how am I going to stand out? How am I going to make my product appeal to these clients to where they're going to want to use me. So focus on, you know, how, how your client thinks, get to where you know your client and like how to get in front of them, but don't forget about the back end with education on how you can become a better photographer. Cause if the product's not good, the clients won't come. So focus on making sure you get those, uh, excuse me, it, making sure that you're the best photographer that you can be and never stop learning. If you stop, if you think that you've reached the point to where you can't learn anymore, that's a red flag. You need to make sure that you keep on learning and try just, just stay creative with it. It can get really discouraging whenever you're trying to get clients and they're not coming in the door. Mentor with people, ask those, you know, people that are out there that are doing this successfully how they're doing it because it, you know, one way is not, not always the right way. Like you could be doing things wrong or you could be doing things just, you know, a little bit off and that, that little bit off could be what's deterring them from coming to you. So definitely focus on the business side and make sure that you're, you're doing that one part with uh, sales and like making sure you're having income coming in, but really focus on the education of building the best product possible because even if you, you know, even if you're not super great with sales, which, you know, takes a lot of training and everything to do, if the product is good, it can sell itself sometimes. And that's, that's, I would say my, my closing thoughts. <laughs> well, I appreciate those closing thoughts. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and you're right. The, um, our, the quality of our photography absolutely matters. And, and I think most of us would agree with that. I, I don't know that um, that uh, anyone would think, well, it doesn't matter. Um, they may think, well, best marketer wins. Well, there's some truth to that too, because I've seen some pretty average work from people who are doing pretty darn well. Uh, but mm -hmm. you're right. We have to keep on increasing in every, every aspect of our business. It's another reason to narrow down the focus because you're not going to learn enough about every single category there is in photography because photography touches every aspect of our lives. There are too many variables in photography. Um, and so uh, narrowing down and just doing a handful of things that bring you the most joy causes you to be better at those things. Not just average at everything, but better and, and get to the point where you're actually giving your clients what you think you are giving them the best, uh, not 100%. just your best, but the mm -hmm. best. And you do that by what you're saying. You keep on learning. You're taking classes. You're uh, you're hanging out with a mentor. You're there's there's a lot of ways to do that. And you should do uh, people ask, well, what's the best way? All of them. Exactly. Do them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, just just do it. Um, there's, uh, yes, it's time consuming, but I have, uh, I have visited since I started looking, since I started considering being a photographer, my, the first job I ever photographed that was a paid job was 1983. So it's been a number of years. I went full-time in 1991 after getting my degree in photography. So, um, yeah, I've been doing a long time, but during that, uh, between the late eighties and oh, probably about 10 years ago, I, I visited photographers. 
I would go mm-hmm. and visit. I would call. I'd go and visit. I would spend time with them. Sometimes it wasn't a whole lot of time. The other times it was quite a bit of time. But there were a total of 500 photographers, over 500 photographers that I visited during that time. And I think that that caused me to grow. Now, during that time, I took classes. I took workshops. I, I had business coaches the entire mm-hmm. time. Um, so all of that stuff adds to you becoming the person who you actually say you are. Exactly. And so, um, so thank you for, for sharing that you, we keep on learning because I Absolutely. totally agree. And of course I'm biased. I teach photography. So of course <laughs> I'm going to say, go Aaron, when you tell people to keep on learning, um, because well, <laughs> it's that's so true do. though. <laughs> it's so true though. Like I've seen so many people that think that they've reached that level of, of being a professional. <clears throat> and then you look at some of their work and it's like, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's you know their art but it's not like wow you know what i mean like they but they 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 just say that this is the work that that um you know that i'm i'm at and i don't need to learn anything else it's like you could be so much better you just have to keep working at it yeah thank you so much for bringing that aaron and and all the other you know, the, these experiences that you've had thank you for being willing to to share uh, you, you i keep hearing people say well you know uh, and people aren't willing to to share they you know i've asked but they haven't they haven't uh, responded i've had 500 people share with me over the years and every single panelist that i've asked mm-hmm. has been more than happy to be on the show to share i still have oh, yeah. yet to find a person who's not willing to share and so i don't understand how people are saying they don't exist i think it's because they don't try hard enough to find them that's my opinion and it's just that Maybe they have been trying really hard and, and just that been unlucky, but I've yet to find a photographer who's not willing to share. I, I feel like it's just excuses sometimes, you know, like there are so many people who are willing to give answers to these things. And, and sure. as long as you, you know, reach out, you know, they, they will, you know, you might have some people who are like, yeah, get out of my inbox or whatever, but the majority of people we've been, you know, at the spots where, you know, wherever you're at photographer wise, business wise, We've all been there. Everyone had to start out at, you know, a certain level and, you know, progress. And so everybody wants to help that I've, I've experienced is like, you know, I've had tons of people have influenced me and like helped me grow and everything. I think maybe one, 2% of people that I've reached out to whenever I was growing, you know, in photography that, uh, you know, didn't respond or something like that. But majority of people are like, yeah, you know, bring your camera, like, you know, I'm going on this session, you know, as you want to carry my bags and then I'll, you know, teach you about (laughs) this and that, you know, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Aaron. All right. I'm going to bring back the other two panelists and have all of you on at one time. So let's bring back on Adrian and Amato. I, I want to, you know, bring you guys on to, to say thank you. And as, as I've, Mm -hmm. as you know, I'm bringing the, and bringing that back on, I, I want you guys, viewers, to take a moment in the comments to tell them what you feel. Say thank you. Please, you know, please show a little of appreciation for their gift of time and attention by clicking the like button, making a comment, saying thanks for being here. Thanks that uh, this, th- thanks for having this show. Whatever it is that you want to say, share what you're feeling right now. Show some appreciation. It's good for you and it's good for us as well. Hit that like button, hit that love button. And it's because of wonderful people like Adrian, Amato, and Aaron who are uplifting the photography community that we continue to grow and become better at everything that we're doing, being, being good photographers, being good people. Uh, So thank you guys so much for being here today. You rock. Thank you for having having us. us. Of course. Uh, So uh, I'm going to take you guys back off and, uh, you know, you're welcome to hang on till after the show and visit. Um, but uh, at this point, I'm going to be telling everybody what the upcoming shows are, uh, the next two of them anyway. Uh, and so thanks once again for you guys. You guys rock. I appreciate you. Thank you. Our pleasure. Woo, man. Aren't they fantastic? We always have the best panelists. And the reason is because photographers love helping other photographers. Photographers rock. You guys rock. I appreciate you very much for being here. Now, I wanted to uh, uh, share with you guys 
uh, some of the upcoming shows. As you know, if you've been watching this, uh, this show for a while, you're aware that this happens every single Monday. And so I, I want to um, uh, tell you what the next two shows are. And those are on both Mondays at noon. In fact, it's every Monday at noon. And there's just one exception. The second Monday of each month, we move it to 630 in the evening to bring on panelists. And the reason it's moved to 630 is because it's easier to get panelists at 630 on a Monday evening than it is at noon. Simple as that. Um, and probably there's a lot of you who can watch at 630 who may not be able to watch at noon. And you can always watch these as a replay because they're sitting in that Facebook page or on that YouTube channel or on that LinkedIn page. They are sitting there for you to view at any time. Now, at some point, there's going to be too many. We're probably going to take them off. But right now, they're all sitting there. And this is episode number 121. So that means 121 hours worth of business related information for photography. And it's free. You don't have to pay a dime for it. You just have to use your time wisely uh, to be able to put it into your schedule. But coming up, we have uh, in one week from today, we have harmony between client requests and artistic style. Now, what is more important, client requests or your artistic style? I mean, both are something you need to be ta taken into consideration, but it depends. For many pros, it's a delicate balance between um, uh, that, that can be mastered over time. It, but in this episode of the Portrait Profit Show, we will unlock new processes, new considerations, and new levels of inspiration to bring harmony to your business. And in two weeks, we'll be doing, and let's bring that one up. And it would help if I put the date there, too. So that is on June 19th, Harmony Between Client Requests and Artistic Style. And then on the uh, 26th, Monday the 26th at noon, we're going to have a uh, we're going to talk about vocabulary. Now, that might seem like an odd one, but I believe that the words you use tell your prospects and your clients a little something about you. Like photographic images that you create, vocabulary, the words you use, the phrases you use, have the potential to transform perceptions. Our vocabulary review, reveals values and it influences how you are perceived. In this episode, we'll explore photography, photography vocabulary and define the differences between various aspects of a photography business. So a lot of the popular questions that I get um, and words and phrases that I hear often, we're going to share in this episode of the Portrait Profits show. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'm going to take those down uh, of the, uh, the Portrait Profits show, the How I Get My Clients panel. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've gotten something out of it. If you have, let me know in the comments. Hit that like button. Hit that love button. Um, let me know what it is you've gotten from this, what things you might be able to put into your business. Our fantastic panel of experts has shared with you their wealth of knowledge and experience, of, of their, their valuable insights, their practical tips. We hope that the discussions throughout this, uh, this show, this episode, have empowered you. And as you know, success in portrait photography is not just uh, not just about the technical side, uh, continuing photography education, you know, that kind of thing. Those, those things are important, but it is in building genuine connection with your clients. As you apply these tips and suggestions that have been suggested by our, our panelists, I hope your journey towards your definition of success is filled with creativity, fulfillment, and prosperity. And I want to thank you for joining us and keep capturing those beautiful moments. For Landers Photography School and Digital Pro Lab, my name is Jim Landers. And I'm bringing you the weekly Portrait Profit Show, giving you evolving content, awareness, and even fun to the business side as we unpack the mysteries of the business side of photography with tips and insights to help you with the struggles you deal with now 
so you are constantly realigned to the path that leads to the success you deserve. Thank you for investing your time here at the Portrait Profit Show. I look forward to watching you grow. Bye for now. Thank you.